Hey everyone, Trini here, back with another mixed media video. Today we're going to be working on the jelly plate and then do some watercolor maybe over top of it. I'm going to start off with the Weathered Wood Distressed Oxide um, ink pad. This are These are pizza uh, box uh, masks that I put down here. I can't speak today. And I'm just going to put some of this out. I kind of wanted to I've been using these pizza boxes because, well, I have a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, it's just a less, a more eco way than using a different paper mask all the time, I think. So now let's put down a little bit of the, some texture here with our lovely netting. Just to make some fun textures and pull these up. And put this down. So I thought we'd do some of the, some of this texture first down here. We are on watercolor paper, so once I get, well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put down a layer of matte medium. I probably should, but I need to decide what I'm gonna do there's still a little bit left on here, so let's, let's just do this. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to actually make it all water-based products, and if I am, then I'm probably not going to seal it into the paper. Okay. Oh, that turned out nice. I think I want another layer of that, so let's put down another layer of this here. The weathered wood. My favorite. I need to get it with another one of the vintage linen. I've really been grooving on that in the other watercolors that we bought. The pencils. Okay. I don't think I'm going to lay down a layer of the black of the espresso after this. I think that would be really cool. Okay. Got some fun things going on there. We need to bring it down a little bit. I think I just want to put a little bit up here. I'm going to change that shape a little bit. I'm just going to take off some of this. I kind of want to use that, but I don't want it to be the same shape. So I think it'd be a really fun line through here. Let's see if that shows up. Oh, it's not too bad. It's kind of neat. Okay. Okay, let's come in with a little bit of the ground espresso. I'm just going to put down the top mask here because I think I want the bottom to be a little bit more free flowing. I'm going to take the sheet of uh, plastic wrap. I've seen this done with watercolor, so I was thinking maybe we could add some texture that way. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Interesting. Um, yeah, let's put that down. Okay. I'm going to put it this right through here. Maybe a little overlap. I'm going to get that color down there. Love working with the distressed inks on the uh, jelly plate. Okay. Ooh, that's fun. We got a little bit left, as always. I'm just gonna put a little bit down here. I don't want to cover up all of this because I do want to put down. Um, I do want to put down just a little bit of watercolor. Ooh, that's fun. Look at that. That's real fun. Okay, let's have you come in for a close up here. Let me kind of see what we did. I like these layers. These are fun. 
also like how quickly that um, we are working on a sheet of Canson watercolor paper today. I don't know if I said that earlier. Um, let's bring in, I want to see how this reacts with the uh, Schmincke watercolors. So let's do that. So let's just lay down a little bit through here just to kind of see how it's going to react. I mean, my feeling is it's going to pick up a little bit of the oxides. I don't know that I've ever used watercolor over the oxide inks, but it's not, it's not blending in crazy. Um, let's add in, that was a yellow. I've already got a brown there. I'm going to add just a little bit of this orange color here. Try not to, I'm being pretty gentle with it, trying not to disturb the layers underneath. And I think if you're gentle with it, you should be fine. But you know me, <laughs> I'm not a terribly gentle person. Okay, okay. This is Payne's Gray with a little bit of indigo. I just kind of want to make some wispies. I don't want it to be too much, I don't think. Let's come down just a little bit, though. Might want to do some dry brushing through there at some point. So these are the distressed... I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> these are the... Um, it's the Derwent line and wash set. As you can see, I've had it for a while. It's my really favorite go-to for when I, on the rare occasion that I paint outside. And I just love the colors. So what we've got here are a couple of ink tints colors. These two are ink tints colors, and I think this one is. And then you also have some graphite tint colors. So this is the graphite tint port, which is kind of fun. It's like a, let me pull it over here so you can see it. It's like almost like a purpley brown color. It's super, it's super fun. Um, so we're gonna put a little bit of that down. So that's gonna add just another layer of, I don't want a lot of it, but look at that color, look how wonderful that is and how it just adds into uh, what we already have going on. I really like this color a lot. I use it quite a bit, but in the pencil form, it's, a little hard to get this level of color through here, but I do like it. Um, and that set is one of my favorite watercolor sets. I just want to add a little bit of dry brush through here, maybe with some of that color just to kind of bring it up a little bit. I'm just going to put some down here too. We like that. That's fun, I think. I like a dry brush. Give me a comment if you like dry brushing. But I like texture, so maybe it's not for everybody. Um, okay, let's let this dry, and then we'll come back in, I think, with some aquapasto. Okay, so I've mixed some, some of the aquapasto. We're going to try it with the... Uh, shaper because we haven't done that yet and I want to see how it works so I think I just want to bring it through here oh my gosh that's so great look at that okay I don't know why I didn't think of this I've been using that spatula which is awesome but the color shaper I mean that is kind of fabulous. I'm going to keep bringing it down a little bit. Okay, this is a game changer right here. I don't know why I didn't think to use it with a color shaper before. I love that shape. I love it. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, yeah, so we can... Definitely do that. Um, what happens if we, we could probably even do something like that. 
you know what I mean? Just scrape it away. What about if we did it through here? This might make more sense to me. Okay, it's not really working so well there. I love how it's translucent, but you can still see it. Okay, so I don't have a Payne's Gray. This is just a cheap old Master's Touch set of two watercolors that my auntie gave me because she was trying to be helpful. Um, so we're going to use a little bit of this Ultramarine. I'm going to mix it in, maybe, with this orange color with the color that we had before. I'm not gonna need that. I'm just gonna use this rubber tipped spatula thing here. Um, that's not gonna be enough. So let's mix in, not yellow, let's do this burnt umber. I try not to use black with my mixes because I don't really, Black just changes. I mean, it's a good color, but it just, when you mix it with colors, the tone of things change a lot. And I don't really like the way that happens. Okay, this is very not gray. And I'm not the world's best color mixer either by any stretch of the imagination. I might need some white maybe, because that's fun. <laughs> Okay, let's, um, let me get out a brush here. Let's just get out a brush. It's probably going to be easier. Okay, there we go. I mean, you can pretty much make gray with any color, like um, opposites on the color wheel. This is not quite the gray that I wanted. Okay, I've settled on this sort of bluish gray. So what I want to do is, I think I want to bring it just, I don't know what I want to do here. Um, let's just start making marks. I'm kind of liking this sort of wispy kind of cloud thing we got going on here. Oh, that's fun. I don't want to cover it all up, right? But I kind of don't want, okay, that was probably a mistake. Hmm, I didn't want that to happen. Okay, well, it has happened, so let's just embrace it. I still am not really fond of what's going on here. Actually, now that it's sort of spread out a bit, I don't hate it. For those of you new here, I say that a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to continue on down here with the aqua pasto. I kind of want some thicker spots over the paint that are more opaque and less transparent. I think that looks really cool. Okay, so I want some of this blue tint down here, just a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with the weathered wood on the skinny brayer. And we're just gonna brayer some of this color that out of the way onto here, just to give it a little I just want a little bit of that kind of color through here. Not a lot, just something that kind of brings it all together. I was gonna do a jelly plate, but I think this is gonna be better. Cause honestly, that's like, that's what I was talking about. Just a little bit. This is one of my favorite techniques right here. Try not to get into the wet part there. Um, sometimes I get a little lost down here at the edge of the paper. Like I never know what to do with this section. <laughs> it like sometimes just sort of flops around and acts really bizarro. Um, 
Maybe it needs like some texture through there. Okay, I've got one of my fun little makeup sponges here with some weathered wood. And we're just gonna use this stencil to kind of lightly put some of these textures through here. What do you think about that? I like it. Let's do a little bit more. I don't want it to be the same. Gotta use one of my Sherry stencils. Thanks, Sherry. Some ground espresso over that. Even soften it a little more. I like my textures to make sense. <laughs> For some reason that just didn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, that's working a little better. Like I like that one, I think that one turned out great. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that does some. So I just put down some white acrylic paint. This is Liquitex. I'm just gonna lightly spread that out. And then we're gonna use this like we would with um, our other marks. I think, I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna put this. I had an idea. <laughs> Um, I think I want just a little bit of white in some spots. So maybe up here. Let me see how this works. Because it's a wetter medium. What if we did that? Okay, that's kind of fun, but I don't really like how splotchy that got. Just another way to add marks down through here. You have to be very light with this and not press it down or it's gonna go everywhere. Ooh, that's fun, I like that. Okay, so I've rubbed off some of this um, English red from Kieran Dash. I'm just gonna make some marks through here. Ooh, those are fun. Those are really fun. Um, let's come in with the back, the end of this brush too. Let's see. Make some big marks. You can see those are a little different. Um, and then I think I just want some. through here. I want to put a line through here, but I'm going to use my, use this palette knife. Because it makes little skinny marks really nicely. And then I think I just want to do another one. Okay, so here it is with the mat. Um, I like it. I like the really loving this layer that we put down with the aqua pasto. 
love the scribbly marks like this um, layer up here with the thick aquapasto and the distressed oxide underneath of it. Love the lines with the carbon paper. Um, I think we got some really cool textures going on here. I even kind of like that little stamp that I put down that I didn't like before, but I think it really adds something down here at the bottom without being too overbearing. Um, yeah, I really like the shape that we got going on here. And this is kind of fun, like right through here. Um, okay, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Click over here to see the la last video. Um, I'll be back in a couple days with another video and maybe we're going to start on a concertina book, I think, and do more collagey things and take all of these techniques and make like one cohesive piece. I'll explain more later. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.